Electrification in En-ROADS. We've improved the sector extensively and given you access both to new policy input sliders, but also new assumption sliders. And the big headline is this. Previously in En-ROADS, you could just mandate electrification success. You move these sliders on the main screen and boom, you got massive electrification. Now what we've got is on the main screen is um, much more limited ability to change it because you're changing the market and policy drivers that would lead to electrification success. You're going to see less results in emissions changing and temperature in the main screen here in En-ROADS. However, if you go in the advanced view, you're able to make the changes that give you extensive full electrification um, by changing a whole range of policy inputs. I'm gonna walk you through all of those new policy sliders to explore. Here are the two views to look at. In the top left, and I'll focus here on transport, final energy consumption, electric share of transport sales on the left, and on the right, total transport. And the distinction here is on the left, this is of all the cars and bus, buses and trucks and rail and shipping and uh, airplanes, of all those sales every year, what share of it is electric? On the right is of all of it exists in the world, what share of it is electric? And there's a lag between the two because of the capital stock turnover. It takes about a lifetime of about 15 years, it means that it takes a while for the old stuff to move out and the new stuff to move in. Look at the lag. You can see that the sales hits 10% around 2032, whereas the total share, the total share hits 10% around 2040. So it's about a 10 year lag. Okay, let's go look and see the different policy sliders that you can change. They're in two major groups. First, we'll focus on the things that directly encourage sales of electrified transport. To encourage those sales, we go underneath here, electrified transport, and I'm going to select on the right the cost ratio of electric to oil powered transport. That cost is the total cost of ownership of electrified transport. That includes both the purchase price as well as the fuel and operations and maintenance. And here back in 2000, it was about 10% higher. The electric was 10% higher than oil powered transport, which is at the dotted lines, but coming down over time. I'm going to click on detailed settings and here electric transport subsidy. You can subsidize electric transport. When you do that, look in the bottom right and you'll see that that cost ratio changing and the cost coming down a lot. More gets purchased, the sales goes up and the overall, the share of total transport goes up. That's the first thing you can do is to subsidize the purchase of electrified transport. I'll undo this and then scroll down to the other key ingredient is charging infrastructure. When you change this slider, you're going to build charging infrastructure to meet whatever demand is coming. What percentage do you build? That's the second way. These two work together. In fact, when you move the top slider on the main view, you're changing both. That's how you increase it. I'll undo this and explore the third way that you encourage electrification directly. And that is by making electricity inexpensive. Several things do that, encouraging inexpensive renewable energy, wind and solar means that electricity is a little less expensive, driving more investment in electrified transport. Those are the three ways to directly encourage electrification. One can also drive more electrification by discouraging its competition which is fuel-based transport, particularly internal combustion engine cars. So there's another slider that you can now change under electrified transport. You click 
use detailed setting and scroll down here where you can set a limit to fuel powered transport sales. When you take it down from 100% down much, much lower, you're going to say we're only going to allow a little bit of fuel powered transport sales. That drives massive investment and sales of electrified transport. One can also do the same with air and water because that first one is just road and rail. For air and water, one can do the same thing and say ban uh, fuel base and that drives up more and more uh, fuel power transport sales in air and water. The other way to encourage electrification by discouraging fuel is to make that fuel expensive. Taxing oil, setting a carbon price, these are all things that will drive more electrification. Those are the three ways to encourage, the two ways to discourage the fuels. But let's move on and make see how it's different in the world of overall buildings and industry electrification. I'll reset going to pull up the sales of buildings and industry equipment, heat pumps, etc. And we have a similar result here where we can encourage sales, subsidize the sales here, but one can also, and if you really want to see large results, limit fuel powered equipment sales. That would be things like not allowing natural gas hookups into com commerce and into residential and into homes. Those are things that could lead to much greater adoption. One can also change many of the assumptions behind this area. I'll scroll down here to electrification. And we've now exposed many of these assumptions regarding how much attention is applied to the total cost of ownership of this equipment or this vehicles versus the purchase, uh, the sticker cost, the sticker price, purchase cost, um, some of the delays, the progress ratio, and what fraction of the total capital cost is reducible by the progress ratio. Those are some of the assumptions that have been exposed. All right, significant electrification improvements I hope that was helpful.